Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm Curtis Smith. It's spring now here in New Mexico. Things are starting to grow and we're ready to get in the gardens. And John Carney in Albuquerque grows a lot of tomato plants. Let's look at what he's doing. John, this is really beautiful. This is a lot of tomatoes. What are they for? Well, uh, these are tomatoes are part of our program for senior adults at uh, Hoffman Town Church. And we try to get people to do, do, do gardening and raise, and we do that by help them raise tomato plants. And this is something any large group could do then. Sure. One or yeah. a few people can produce a lot of tomato plants for the rest of the group to use. Yeah, if we can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, it looks like you're doing awfully well. And you do have a good reputation for this. So uh, you've got this cold frame full of tomato plants. Right. Uh -huh. And you're watering them right now? Yes, they, this time of the year, I mean, this weather, they have to be watered every day, just about. Yeah, these plants uh, represent uh, part of the, uh, the plants we're going to distribute as part of our program. And uh, these are raised in a seven week period. Seven weeks? Uh -huh. And this is not seven weeks yet? No, this is not seven weeks yet. We start seven weeks from the distribution date and we plant seedlings. Four days later, we plant another pet, a batch of seedlings. That's batch B, the first was batch A. And then four weeks prior to distribution date, which was two weeks ago Thursday, why we receive plugs, which are seedlings grown, grown in commercial places. So you do start with some seed and some transplants. Plug, right, and that gives us, it helps us to compact our schedule a little bit to seven weeks, mm -hmm. which sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. But in any event, we have a seven week period. Batch A started at uh, seven weeks before we plant them, maybe distribute them. The second batch, six and a half weeks, the plugs we receive, I don't know how old they are, we receive and transplant them uh, four, day, four weeks before distribution date. Okay, and can you show us how you go through this process? Well. Yes, I will. Uh, the, we have two sets of plants to deal with. First is uh, what we grow from seeds, and that's batch A and B. Uh, to grow them from seeds, we have a seed cup like this. It has holes in the bottom for drainage. has holes in the bottom like that. And we uh, fill this with a, a germinating medium. After we fill it and level the surface, we put about 70 seeds in this seed tray, and then we place about a quarter inch of material on top. Some and to wet that, yes, and to wet that, we put it in a tray like this that has a, about an inch of water in it. Water will soak up through the holes and saturate the, uh, the seed tray. After it's saturated, we put, take this out and put it on the garage floor and let it drain a while. After it drains for a few minutes, we put it in a plastic bag such as this with a twisty, mm -hmm. and then we place this somewhere where it's about 70 degrees, 72 degrees temperature, and uh, it's dark. Don't have to have light at this stage. No, not light at this stage, and it doesn't have to be completely black dark. Anyway, we set this on where we're gonna leave it, and we check it. You don't have to check it 15 minutes, every 15 minutes like <laughs> I do, but in three or t four to five days, why the seedlings will start coming up. After they come up, we'll take the plastic bag off. We now have them in this container with the seedlings coming up. We place it in a tray under fluorescent lights. Okay, and you've got the stand with uh, several tiers of plants right. and lights over each tier. And that's right, and we'll explain a little bit about that detail, but we have the, we place this under the fluorescent lights and we let it stay under there until those seedlings that have come up are strong and look like they're strong and sturdy and have produced their first pair of real leaves. Then, after they've reached that point where we can transplant them, we transplant them into uh, two and a half inch by two and a half inch by three and a half inch pots and we set them back under the lights again mm -hmm. until they've been there about a week or so and that we think they're sturdy enough to bring outside. So at that point they're how old? Well, they, they're uh, uh, several weeks old. Okay, so it's been These, under the lights for a few, seed to light for a few weeks. Right, uh -huh. they spend a couple weeks under lights, both as seedlings and as transplanted, and it took them a while to get to that point, and it took them a while to germinate. Mm -hmm. So once we get them in this, in this position and out in the trays, we have them in cold frames like you see here. You've got a lot of cold frames. How many do you have? Well, we have seven cold frames we have a total of 54 trays in, in those cold frames. Okay, so there's a lot of tomatoes out here. 
And uh, I noticed all your cold frames are not the same. There are a lot of different styles here. No, we've made them one at a time, and each time we did something different. You'd mm -hmm. think people could be consistent, but... How well do they do as far as holding your temperature for you? Well, they hold the temp... They, they don't really control the temperature too much except make it hot. Warm it up during the daytime. Right, they warm it, and, and they get very warm in the daytime, but... Uh, if we were to measure the temperature at the coldest part of the day, we'd find the temperature outside was about the same as the temperature inside. So these really aren't protecting against frost at Not night? Not too much. Their biggest thing they do is protect against the wind and protect against too much sun because it keeps them from getting the direct sunlight uh, too early in their life. Okay, we're going to come back in a few minutes and learn even more about what John is doing here. Mm -hmm.